In this section, we're going to start learning about the epithelial tissues and the characteristics that we find in all epithelial tissues. And then as we go through the next sections, we're going to learn a little more specifics about the epithelial tissues and the structures we find within them. So the first thing is, as we've already said, epithelial tissues cover every surface inside and outside the body. So all the body cavities, those are lined in epithelium. Every organ is covered in an epithelium. The inside of every organ is covered in an epithelium. Um, an epithelium is one or more layers of epithelial tissue working together, um, usually between two part compartments, sometimes between the inside and the outside of a body. A lot of times we talk about these two things sort of interchangeably without making an, a, a distinction between a single layer of tissue and an epithelium. Also, many epithelia, that's the plural, are actually just one layer of tissue. So the characteristics, first of all, epithelial tissues are cellular. They're made up of cells, which doesn't sound important until we get to the connective tissue, which is actually mostly not cells. Um, the, uh, the cells in an epithelium have a distinct polarity, meaning that they have a top side and a bottom side, a specific top and bottom sides. The top side is called the apical surface, Apical comes from the same root as apex, meaning top. So this apical or apex surface is uh, the either up against another layer of, of epithelial tissue or free facing either the outside or a lumen or the inside of an organ or something like that. The basal surface, the bottom, um, is attached to a basement membrane. And then the lateral surfaces of all the cells are going to be connected to each other by intercellular junctions, which we'll talk about in the next section. The basement layer is actually a layer, um, it's a, an extracellular layer. So it's created by the cells, secreted by the cells. Um, and it attaches the basal layer, basal surface of the epithelial cells to the connective tissue underneath it. Uh, your textbook says you can clearly see it on a microscope. It lies. We usually can't see the basement membrane on a microscope. So just know that when you're looking at microscope slides, you're not going to see the basement membrane most of the time. Um, epithelial tissues are always bound to a basement membrane. They're always attached to something. And again, that sounds really obvious, but blood, for example, is a connective tissue, which is obviously not, connect, not connected to anything, not bound to anything. Avascularity, A meaning without vascular, referring to blood vessels. So no blood vessels. Blood vessels are going to go underneath the epithelium, deep to the epithelium. But the epithelial tissues themselves are only going to receive nutrients by diffusion. Diffusion, osmosis, sometimes active transport. But generally speaking, nutrients, water, oxygen is going to have to dis diffuse through the layers of epithelial tissue, which is one reason that epithelial layers are very thin. Innervation, lots of nerve endings, often within the epithelial tissue or right under the epithelial tissue. High regeneration capacity. Almost all epithelial tissues um, get damaged because of abrasion because they're, a lot of them are exposed to the outside. And so they can be replaced very quickly. Sometimes there is a special layer of cells that do mitosis to replace the layers above. Sometimes the individual epithelial cells will do uh, mitosis themselves to create their re own replacement. Functions of epithelial tissue, primarily physical protection uh, to expose uh, surfaces from dehydration, from abrasion, from destruction, but also to hold things in place and um, protect organs from movement within the body and movement by things around them. Selective permeability. Remember we talked about selective permeability when we were talking about cells. Cells allow some things in and some things not. Well, when you put a bunch of those cells together, they can allow some materials to cross the epithelium and get into the bloodstream and other materials not. 
This is really important, for example, with your skin, where most things you want to keep out of your body. Your skin is actually mostly waterproof, which I think is one of the coolest things in the world. Um, but some materials, such as um, fats, um, oils, can penetrate partway through your skin, not all the way. Um, some hormones, on the other hand, can go through the skin, and that's how you can get dermal application or skin application of like hormone patches. Um, so selective permeability is really important in protecting the inside of the body from toxins or pathogens in the outside environment. Epithelial tissues have tons of sensation. Uh, lots, like the previous slide said, lots of innervation, nerve endings, so that it's very good at sensing changes in the environment. Now that could be the environment outside the body. It could be the environment outside the body, meaning inside the digestive tract, or it could be changes in the area around an organ inside the body. Some epithelial tissues also do secretions. And later in this chapter, we're gonna talk about glands and the different ways that glands secrete products to other parts of the body. And that is, so that's enough for an introduction to the epithelial tissue. Next, we're gonna talk about the particular characteristics and how we distinguish epithelial tissues.